so in this session we will discuss about some of the results which we can view after we run the nonlinear dynamic analysis uh, using e tabs so i will use this example model which you are currently viewing in your screens uh, for this quick demonstration actually so this model have uh, uh, nonlinear components uh, we are currently introduced with uh, the plastic hinge approach for nonlinear modeling of rc beams so this model is an rc frame structure with rc shear walls so currently we will not uh, focus on columns and shear walls uh, let's quickly review the nonlinear uh, components used for modeling of rc beams only so if i go to define uh, this section properties and then frame wall nonlinear hinges I can uh, see this uh, particular form. So this form uh, actually if we check this show generated properties, show hinge details, both of these uh, options, we, we should be able to see this detailed uh, list of all defined plastic hinges in this particular uh, model. So you can see that uh, this hinge, uh, for example, it is a moment m3 hinge it is assigned to a particular beam because this uh, starting letter b denotes or represents that this hinge is assigned to a beam and then uh, it is not a generated property it is not generated from any uh, you can say master hinge it is defined but all other hinges like b1 h1 b1 h2 and so on they are all generated hinges which means they are auto hinges they are generated uh, using the auto hinge option so they are all moment m3 type all of these from b1 h1 and so on so we can click on any of them to just review what properties are uh, assigned or auto assigned actually to this particular and this particular uh, uh, you can say plastic hinge so i can click on any particular definition of hinge and click on modify and then i can go to modify show hinge property and here i will see the same form uh, but i cannot modify it because it is already uh, auto defined and assigned to a particular beam so uh, this is the main uh, you can say moment versus rotation behavior this is graphical form of that behavior acceptance criteria at the bottom hysteretic behavior and uh, then the information about uh, beyond point e whether the load carrying capacity should drop to zero or it should be extrapolated the scale factor uh, in both positive and negative directions which are actually the yield moment because the moment versus rotation is defined in normalized form so b and minus b these two points represent the yield point so i can review all the auto generated properties for this particular b1 h2 hinge so uh, similarly there are many hinges defined uh, and we can also click on a particular beam and right click on it so a new form will open which will tell us about all the assignments uh, which uh, a part this particular beam have so we can see that it has uh, here hinges if i click on hinges uh, so it shows that it has two hinges one is b34 h1 auto m3 which is its type and it is assigned at uh, 0.6152 feet similarly the other hinge b34 h2 so b34 h1 and b34 h2 are the two hinges which are assigned at its both ends similarly uh, i can go for uh, other assignments but currently we can just uh, uh, you can say opt uh, opt for checking these or reviewing these hinge properties uh, currently we are not focusing on columns and shear walls so let's assume that we have defined such kind of hinges for all beams in this particular model and once we are done with nonlinear uh, modeling of all components 
for for those components which we want to have a non linear model uh, or non linear action versus deformation behavior then we can go to define the non linear analysis cases so or load cases so we can quickly review the load cases here in define load combinations uh, sorry load cases and in that uh, let's focus on this last one first which is the non linear dynamic analysis i can modify this one so it is actually using an acceleration pattern which is the ground acceleration this uh, particular case and it is uh, that acceleration is being applied in u1 direction and the function the ground acceleration function is this north ridge ground motion with some scale factor which can account for the unit conversion and uh, some other code based factors like the uh, obviously the non linear time history analysis should not be applied with the code based r factor or i factor so this uh, scale factor can be used for uh, the purpose of converting the units of that particular function file which we uh, imported in etabs uh, and the acceleration units of this particular uh, model which we are using so some scale factor which is uh, which is accounting for that unit conversion we are using no, fast non linear analysis for this non linear time history analysis and the other outputs are same as the linear time history analysis so let's quickly review this function which we have already imported here so let me cancel that and go to define functions and then time history so this north ridge ground motion i can modify and review here that uh, this is the ground acceleration i think it is in the g units so therefore uh, we must convert it into the acceleration units of our model using that scale factor option so it has it is a 40 second ground motion if i go so it is almost 40 second ground motion with a time interval of 0.01 so the actual uh, uh, number of steps may be uh, counted here or may be determined here and then we can give the same number of steps and the time interval in the load cases here so if i again go back and modify the load case so this total number of output steps and the uh, output step size uh, if we match them to the same st time step size and total number of steps as the ground acceleration function then we will be able to get the results for each time instant of ground motion so this number should match with the time steps of ground uh, acceleration history and the time step size of that ground motion acceleration history so for each time step of input ground motion we will have an output uh, in the form of all seismic responses uh, damping again uh, modal damping we have to define in this case of in this uh, the the fna uh, solution method so we can define for example a constant modal damping for all modes or we can give other options they are same as uh, the linear time history analysis or linear response history analysis option and then non linear parameters uh, they affect your solution convergence and other uh, other uh, you can say factors in non linear analysis many of the times we don't need to modify them uh, and solution converge for these default values so we will be just uh, one more thing that uh, this particular case uh, starts the analysis from zero initial conditions but if we want we could have started from the end of another non linear case for example the gravity non linear case if we go for that option then we have to select for uh, the other non linear case which should be run first and then after that the earthquake should be applied for the purpose of simplicity we just start this from the zero initial conditions but actually we have to use the non linear gravity load case as the preceding case or initial condition for this earthquake application so this was uh, about the non linear dynamic analysis
in this uh, non-linear time history analysis if we want to apply the earthquake in both orthogonal directions of building then we have to select uh, another function or the second component of the same ground motion add it here in the same list and select for example u2 here so if i go for acceleration pattern then i can select u2 here and select the second component of the same ground motion uh, maybe this is the x component north ridge ground motion x and then i should define a north ridge ground motion y right with its own scale factor so if we if i go for this thing then i am applying simultaneously x component of ground motion in u1 direction of the building which is the x direction of the building and then the y component of ground motion in the y direction of the building and in order to account for the complete orthogonal loading consideration then i have to make another load case where i should flip these directions so x direction of earthquake in y direction of building and then uh, the y direction of earthquake in x direction of the building so these two load cases will completely account for the complete uh, orthogonal loading requirement if you want to do it in this particular case just for simplicity i only excite the building in x direction which is u1 but in actual case you have to apply both components of ground motion in both directions of your building actually you uh, have to account for orthogonal loading uh, you can say consideration uh, here in this load case only because this is a non linear analysis and in non linear analysis you cannot use uh, the superposition principle which is by default being used in the load combinations in load combinations uh, the results of two different load cases are combined this is not possible or is not valid actually for non linear analysis that you run two cases separately and just combine their results here in non linear analysis since the order of the application of loading or different load cases matters so you cannot simply run two cases separately and then combine their results and say that these are the combined results when both of those loads will apply simultaneously this assumption is not valid for non linear analysis so therefore you have to combine two loading uh, which you want to apply simultaneously you have to combine them in the load case right for linear analysis and for design applications you can use load combinations option but for non linear analysis if you want to apply two load two loads simultaneously uh, you have to combine them in the load case so the program applies them Uh, together and then calculates the response together unlike the load combination option in which it applies uh, the separate load cases and combines the results 